Welcome back to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. We're moving now to Today in History and sharing with you what happened a couple of years ago on the 29th of April. I'm going back to 2006 where, of course, it was an era where there still was a high rate of uh, bombings in Nigeria, but not in northern Nigeria now. It was uh, in the Niger Delta. Destruction of government facilities, uh, mostly pipelines, and uh, uh, the movement for the emancipation of the Niger Delta, and all of that, you know, was uh, very popular in our news back then. On this day, there was a massive car bombing uh, that, of course, uh, according to reports, you know, didn't, uh, you know, mention any actual casualties aside uh, destruction of the cars and, and property in its, um, in, in its space at that time. Uh, the movement for the emancipation of uh, Niger Delta, Niger, Niger Delta militants rather, claimed responsibility for this car bombing in 2006. Uh, they, at that time, were demanding more local control over the Southern Delta's oil wealth and said it used a mobile phone to detonate 30 kilograms of dynamite in the bombing. The attack was a warning to all people working in the oil industry in uh, Nigeria at that time and also made specific threats against China, which had just signed a major oil deal with Africa's top oil producer, Nigeria. Um, and, um, well, over time, you know, there's also been, you know, a reduction in men's activities. Um, the presidency of uh, Omar Musa Yaradwa uh, came in and, of course, there was discussions on um, amnesty for Niger Delta militants. They uh, um, um, surrendered uh, a lot of their weapons. I don't know if it's all of them, but uh, at least they dropped some of those weapons and, you know, amnesty was granted. There's also been the controversy over who really benefited from the amnesty, if it was, was the militant leaders or it was the Niger Delta people themselves um, and all of that. But at least we got to a place where uh, militancy had reduced. We got to a place where uh, a bombings and attack on oil facilities and government facilities had also reduced um, after the amnesty period. Um, lately, and of course in the last couple of years, every now and then you might still hear of threats by the Niger Delta militants to once again go back to their um, agitations and uh, their demands and to hostilities. But you know, luckily we've we've not been able we've not got into that um, a place again. Um, if you remember also, um, um, you know, the, there's a couple of names who also emerged from that, you know, um, era. Asari Dokobo was one of them. Um, and then um, Tom Polo also was one of them. Uh, there, I remember there was criticism over contracts that they were given to protect Niger Delta uh, pipelines and, and oil facilities uh, during Good Luck Abel Jonathan's administration. Billions of Naira were voted for these uh, contracts, you know, that of course, um, you know, were seen as, you know, some type of settlement for these people. Um, but that, you know, once again today in history was the era where there was still agitations and hostilities by Niger Delta militants. Mm. And just last night I watched a video, a, a recent video about um, Niger Delta militants. You know, he, he was clad in military uniform. He had, you know, a white veil over his face and he was reading a statement, you know, threatening to begin to destroy you know, infrastructure assets in Lagos, Abuja, and other key cities because of the failure of government, so to speak. It's so sad that you know, these insecurity threats is not seeming to go away. The government does have a lot on its hands. Yes, it does. So does uh, NDDC. So uh, um, also with the Niger Delta um, and the South South governors. Um, and of course, every other person who you know is a governor in any south south uh, south state, mm -hmm. uh, they've also uh, they everybody you know should share in you know the blame, because you know with better governance, with basic infrastructure, with healthcare, with education, with roads, with cleaning up of, of the Niger Delta, <laughs> we very likely would not have some of all these things um, in existence. Um, you know, I would also say anyway. I don't want to. Let, let's not go into that. But, all right. Um, that's my 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 take. So, um, moving on to something light, let's go to the year 2011, and it was today, on April 29th, 2011, that Prince William and Catherine Middleton got married. This wedding took place, you know, at Westminster Abbey in London, United Kingdom, and it was a significant location because this is the exact venue where Prince William's father, Prince Charles, had been married to his mother, Princess Diana, about 30 years before then. You know, it was an interesting event that day. You know, it was, that day was actually declared a public holiday 
there was so much ceremony that day, about 5,000 street parties in the UK because of this royal wedding. And uh, we know that uh, the, the groom, uh, Prince William, was second in line to, uh, of secession of the British throne, and his bride, Catherine Middleton, had been his girlfriend since 2003. It was a you know, highly televised wedding, where, you know, viewed by tens of millions of people around the world, including about 72 million live streams on YouTube. You know, uh, the bridal dress was designed by uh, London-based designer Sarah Button at Alexander McQueen. She had this beautiful tiara. They did their wedding vows. It was a beautiful wedding, you know. And one interesting thing to me about the whole ceremony is how she did her own makeup. Bring it down here to Nigeria. You know how much makeup artists would milk you when they find out you're doing your wedding. But she, she actually took some, some makeup classes, did her own wedding. They're working about three kids now. And uh, yes, this was the day they got married in 2011. I remember, I remember um, you know, video clips and pictures from that wedding. It was, everybody, who was everybody in the world was there. I remember David and um, Victoria Beckham, you know, being one of the you know, best dressed couple at the wedding then. It was a, it felt like the, um, what's this, uh, this a particular show, you know, that people dress up to? It felt like, you know, like, like an the Oscar. Oscars. <laughs> Not the Oscars, there's some other one. You know, there's the Golden they, Globes, there's the Grammys. There's one other so one that they wear, you know, costumes to, you know, I, I don't remember yeah, the name. Yeah, I, I know what you're talking um, about. So that's what it felt like, you know, with the amount of celebrities around the whole, from the whole, you know, world who, you know, were invited and who showed up to that I was wedding. invited, I just turned it down. Yeah, I know. I, you know. Um, I, I was busy with work. <laughs> So um, I, I remember, you know, very, very uh, well, you know, the, the wedding and um, um, the, the pictures and all of that from that wedding. Mm -hmm. Over time, they've now been, they've had three kids, uh, George, um, Louis and, uh, and Charlotte, um, 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 since they got married. Did you, did but you the, give them the their painful names? Part, yeah, like no, it. I didn't. The painful part, you know, for me is, you know, after their wedding and how much it was celebrated and spoken about and now the support that they've gotten. She's now currently the Duchess of Cambridge. Um, Prince Harry, his brother, eventually still got married a couple of years later to Meghan Markle. And it's not been the same reaction that the world and the, you know, the British people have had towards his own marriage. And that, for me, that's really, really, really hurtful. Um, if the whole world stood up for Prince William and then you know, turned you know, their backs entirely on Harry, very, very unfair. It tells you one thing, there is inequality everywhere. Yeah, absolutely. All right. um, and I, 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 I hope, you know, that at some point, because every time, you know, and for years and years and years, we've spoken about um, racism and how we, the world needs to do better and how we need to be better people and all of that. But it hurts, you know, realizing there are certain things that would just never go away. Mm -hmm. um, there are certain things and certain, you know, aspects of life that would just always be there. What we as human beings need to do is find a way to, you know, minimize, you know, their effects and reduce, you know, how um, much they affect, you know, humanity. Um, but All right. extremism, um, um, religious extremism, for example, racism, those things, you know, sadly would just always exist in our, in our world today. All right. But anyway, um, happy wedding anniversary to um, Kate Middleton yeah. and uh, Prince William. All right, stay with us. Uh, we'll be back after the short break. And of course, uh, we're being joined by our guests to have our first major conversation for today on The Breakfast.